welcome to the Soul Tribe Podcast. The Soul Tribe Podcast was created to help you navigate through the world of spirituality, wellness, and self-development in an easy, grounded, and relatable way. We break down everything from the Akashic Records, manifesting, spirituality, and so much more. We want to help expand your boundaries and bring the spiritual world to you in a fun and easy way. Get ready to be inspired with tips, tools, and easy to digest information. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to the Soul Tribe podcast. We are here with Lorena for today's episode. The last episode that came out was with Courtney, <laughs> the really long and episode. I love you so like, we? Who's we? We? You and your, you're and your guides. <laughs> no. What do you I mean? We, I'm being me, silly. We, me, you. You're like, we are here with Lorena. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. I'm always accompanied <laughs> by something or someone. Your spirit guides. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I never like feel alone, but I never thought about that, actually. Like, I never realized that I said that. Wow. Yeah. You know what? You know, the first thing that comes to mind, like, is, wow. I never, like, that, like, we, we did the whole thing, the, the, the whole, um, the whole, what's it called? The call, the quarterly call on the Patreon. And then we did the book club and the discussion about the book club was the, the four agreements, right? And one of them yeah. was be impeccable with your word. And like, you try to like, not only listen to what you're saying and how you're saying it, but also how you're thinking. And and, and that's something that I never even decided to pick up on because I was just trying to pick up on the negative stuff. Like, okay, don't say this, don't say that, don't think about that, and don't say it this way. And now that you made me say we, it's like, oh, that's something I never thought about. Huh. I don't know if you always say that, but I just noticed it today. Okay, well, <laughs> it's me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So... Just to catch up, because I think it's really interesting that um, th- this past weekend, so today is Wednesday. The 8th of February. Day? Yeah. Wednesday. So last weekend, so last Sunday, I went out to dinner with two podcast listeners. Hi, guys. I'm going to say give a shout out to <laughs> Sita and Kim. And um, they, co- they connected with us via Instagram and... They live somewhat close to Amsterdam, and first they were talking to you, and then the idea was, okay, let's go meet up. So we went to dinner, and I I requested that we go, because they're originally from Suriname, so I requested that we go try that food, because I keep hearing how amazing that food is, and there's a lot of like restaurants, kind of like in Amsterdam and around that area, Um, because it's kind of like the the UK has its overseas territories, right, that one is Cayman, Mm -hmm, so... Suriname has that link with um, Holland. That's why. Okay. That's why that. you have a lot of places and stuff like that. Um, and so I decided, okay, I got to try this. Everyone keeps talking about it, and uh, the food was so good. I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I really liked it, and um, the drinks were just as good as well. And there was uh, typical Caribbean stuff like rum with things, and like like sweet cocktails. We had, you know, we had like a really sweet kind of cocktail. And it was nice. And then, of course, a lot of spiritual talk and a lot of uh, learning about each other because, you know, we were just meeting in person for the first time, uh, me with the sisters and we, me, the masters and the sisters. <laughs> 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 and yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out because it was really fun and we had a really good time and it was really nice to meet people, you know, like minded people that are trying to like learn about their true essence and their true selves and advance themselves and heal themselves. And they're also on the path of starting their own podcast as sisters. That's right. Yeah. Um, but they're going to do it in Dutch because their idea is to reach m- another group of people that's possibly not being reached. Right. So we fully support them. I fully support them at least. So, yeah, yeah. of course it was really cool. That's it so was really cool. cool. And it, it makes, it makes the podcast like every time you bump into people or you coordinate to meet up with people, it feels like, okay, this is why I'm doing this. Okay. This, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's a reminder. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And obviously sometimes we can't physically meet some of, some of you guys, but we get, we get to at least stuff. Yeah. Emails and messages and the Patreon and 
it's amazing. Even just the Patreon, like we said, the other, last, was it last week? The 20, no, it was the 21st that we had 21st of January. So that was a couple of weeks ago. I think it's two weekends ago that we did our book talk, like you said, and we did also uh, our quarterly call where we all come on Zoom and just chat and hang out. Uh, so that's always nice because then we get to actually chat. Otherwise, it's like us putting up content or talking on Telegram. But we don't know what like the other side's personal. feeling going through. Yeah, and being able to bounce ideas off each other. And we're doing a whole manifestation experiment this yeah, month, yeah. which I'm really excited about. It was, this was Lucia's idea, which I liked. Um, so we're going to start that pretty soon. And if any of you are interested in in that reach out to us. We'll explain what it is and maybe you'll, you can just join for the month or something and try it out. What was really cool was, um, well, one of my favorite things is like that I get to check in with everybody, be like, dude, guys, I'm exhausted this week. Like, or the last blah, blah days. Like, and then we'll find that everyone's feeling really similar Mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I'm not insane. Or it's not just because like, I, I need to sleep more hours or like you realize that you're being hit with that energy and you're kind of like, oh, okay, okay. okay." Like I think it was today we were talking about, oh yeah, it was today. Today I messaged everyone on, on the telegram group for Patreon. And I was like, for the last three days I've been having like insane exhaustion, but crazy dreams. And so that, that started the subject and we started talking about that and everyone's sharing like their dreams and stuff. And it's getting vivid and they're getting detailed. Like these dreams, we're remembering them and we're, everyone has more details of them and the feelings. We all remember what we felt and it's getting yep. like, it's really cool to confirm. Oh, it's not just Lucia going, going crazy with her dreams again. <laughs> like, I've had quite a few people ask me about dreams and readings lately, actually, which is. Yeah, it's happening. Interesting that you're mentioning that. Yeah. Do you guys remember um, my interstellar travel? dream. Mm -hmm. So I I think I never, I was going to bring this up on the podcast and I think I never ended up getting to to getting around to it. So my interstellar travel dream that you guys, if you remember correctly, for those that heard that episode, I speak about how there was another girl there with me for the mission or for the, I forgot what what word I used. It was like, we were rescuing, right? We were rescuing this boy. Yeah, it was like a rescue mission. Yeah. Yeah. It was a rescue mission. And I didn't, remember like I didn't no sorry I didn't know who she was I had never seen her before but I knew that she was in Europe kind of sort of in my area and like I I remember like the orientation of like oh she's this way over here kind of in the sector so it felt like it wasn't too many countries away from me it felt like it was more to like um so we're like close to the water so it was more to the east so all this stuff right and um Time, some time passed after that dream and I had started my, my course to learn about like studying the galaxy and, and, and one of the courses I signed up for, um, for some reason we were in the telegram group and I couldn't get into the class on the zoom class. And I commented in the telegram group and I said, Hey, I can't get into class or I can't find the link or something like that. I can't find the link. And she literally went and, and, and there's, there's like hundred people in this group or more. And so she literally went and messaged me privately and said, Hey, I'm having the same problems. And I ended up finding the email, look for this subject. Right. And I was like, Oh, thank you. And then, so we were kind of in contact there in telegram. And then we, I checked in after I was like, Oh, thank you for letting me know. And you really helped me out. And Hey, by the way, where do you live? And she's like, Oh, I'm in Switzerland. I'm like, Oh, cool. And then we started talking and we had like, we realized like we had a lot in common and she was, she's from Mexico. And the girl that was in the dream with me spoke Spanish and English too. And she was from Mexico and, uh, she, but she was living in Switzerland for a very long time now. And da, 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 and we started, Oh, we have a lot in common. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. And we were both obsessed with the same kind of courses and the same kind of material. And we we're both like in deep with it. And so we became pretty good friends. Right. And we, we, she does healings too. So we exchanged and I did like a reading for her and all that stuff. And I said to her, okay, I don't know how this is sounds to you, but I had this interstellar dream. This is exactly what happened. And I think that you were the one that was with me. I'm, I'm, there's a reason why I bumped into you, but I'm so sure that that was you. And she's like, I don't remember, but I think so. I had this feeling. I think she was like, she was like, I think so. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. And so today she messaged me. I was, I had told the part the Patreon like members in the telegram group. I had told them about a dream I had about like, 
something was going on on the surface. I didn't know if it was Earth in my dream. Um, I don't know if it was like on Earth or if it had been like on another planet, but something was going on the surface. The probability of you surviving on the surface was minimal. The dream was really intense. It was this, this whole scenario played out. And so it was like really, really like dramatic. And it was like, save yourself kind of energy. And I was trying to save the locals and get them to come down under the surface into like inner earth kind of, right? So this whole thing played out. And she messaged me today and said, hey, we haven't talked in a while. How are you doing? And hey, I want to talk to you about this dream I had because I know that you'll understand me. And she describes a very similar dream, Lorena. Oh and I said to her, <laughs> oh my God. And now I'm full of goosebumps when I'm telling you. I'm like, oh my God, listen to my dream. It is, there's differences in like how she got to the surface and I did, but it was the, basically the same scenario. Like go to the bottom, save yourself. And we had the dream, the dream about, it seems to be at the same, around the same week or the same day even. That's crazy. Yes, it's crazy. So there's like something going on there where like we're having experiences. This is my this is my take on it. Like, and I didn't ask the Keshek records yet. Like we were, cause I was talking to her about it and in the beginning. I was like, maybe it's just a Lucia thing or maybe it's a past life thing. Or I kind of left it at that. And when she came with me with that information, I said, okay, this I'm supposed to like, there's something here. There's something I'm supposed to understand. And I asked her her opinion and she said, well, I think maybe this is going on. I said, this is what I thought was going on. I think, cause we have collapsing timelines and this is something we've never talked about in the podcast. And this has to do a lot yeah. with like the course that I'm creating, Cosmic You. But at one point you learn that for ascension to happen, there's all these timelines that are open and we need the timelines to collapse. They need to collapse into themselves. And so remember that we have a lot of parallel lives and there's all these, I guess you could call other versions of ourselves. And those versions of ourselves, when a timeline collapses, that fractal that's the version of yourself comes to, comes to the one that's best doing the best. So let's say that Lucia is the one over here that does, has a podcast over here that's talking. She's the one that's the highest vibration doing the best. When one of the crappy um, timelines collapses, that fractal comes to me. So I gain more, gain more of myself. Like I start fractal, fractalizing myself back. So I, okay. it's this whole thing that's going on. It's been going on for a very, very long time. It's part of our ascension. We have the, 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 it's called the temporal lines. I think they're called in English. Um, they have to come back. They have to collapse and come back to the self. And I said, I think that that's one of the timelines collapsing and we experienced it. And then when that collapse timeline ended, when the fractal came to ourselves, we, we were able, our subconscious was able to experience the worst moment that that fractal of ourselves or that parallel version of ourselves had. This is like, yeah. right. That feels right. And she, I guess, I guess her and I are hanging out there on that temporal line or something. Like, I don't know. Or we just both collapsed. We, we both were conscious of the collapsing of the line. Because if I'm experiencing the collapsing of the temporal line, and she is, actually everyone that has a fractal there, is, is, it's not just me and her. Everyone's experiencing it. And so I was just able to tap into the consciousness. But the, the scenario of what we live was so similar that I said, it has to be something. It has to be something. It has to be something. Yeah, it does. So, yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> There's a lot going on. That feels right, though. The fact that you both kind of connected with the same experience in some way. And that confirms to me that that dream that I... I, I, I don't know what it was, Lorena. That wasn't a dream. That wasn't a dream. No, it wasn't a dream. I'm just going to call it a dream for, per se, right? But like the interstellar travel, I woke up and I knew that I, I had been doing that work. My, not me, Lucia, but my soul or my astral body did that work. And when I finally bumped into her, I never expected to meet up with the person, actually. I didn't even, it's not even something I suspect. I was like, oh, I, interesting. I wonder if the person who was there with me remembers as well. That's what my thought was. And I left it at that. And then when I met her, I said, this is her. Like I knew a hundred percent. I knew it was her. She, I knew she, I knew she had the brown hair. I knew she was Hispanic, but she was like not dark skinned. Like, um, like, you know, you have some South American countries, for example, the darker skinned, we're like, like super white. Skin. Yeah. Everything, everything about her was exactly the person I had seen, even t from the like living, living, uh, in the area where I am kind of, and also speaking the two languages I speak. And I was like, okay, I knew this is her right away. Wow. So when she came with this dream, I said, wow, okay. <laughs> this is insane. It's insane. That's pretty insane. Yeah. So, But interesting. Do you think it's common for people to find, like, people near you to be, like, like how you experience with her? Do you think it's common for other people for that to happen? Be like, 
we were in this other parallel life or, or whatever fractal energy together. Well, I, yeah, I, th- I mean, not even just parallel. I think that it can happen. Um, even just the astral body having experience with another astral body. I can personally attest to having someone in my life whom I don't really have contact with phys- physically, but it's someone that I yeah. know is a soulmate level. Like, it's okay, you live your life, I live my life, and, you know, we're not supposed to be together right now and, and all that, and it's fine. And we have, like, semi-communication, but I know that there's a massive soulmate, like, connection there that you just can't get rid of, even if you're not connected with the person this lifetime. And there's a lot of times where I will have a dream on a night and wake up, message the person and be like, Hey, do you remember anything from last night? Do you remember seeing me? And I will, I will almost always get back. I don't remember, but I remember that I was with you or I do know that you were there, but I can't figure out what happened. And I'll, I'll be the one that remembers everything. So I always, almost always get a confirmation from that person that like, yes, you were, you were somewhere in a dream for the, you know, for some people it's just a dream, but it's like, you were somewhere in my dream, but I can't remember what was going on. And I'm like, oh, well, I can tell you what was going on. Cause I remember everything. <laughs> I lived the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, in that case, that's, that's not a, th- that scenario that I was just talking about, which has happened to me in the last year, a lot. That scenario is not the person um, and, or, or, or me on a parallel experience, it's more astral, our astral bodies are hanging out somewhere and having an experience. Yeah, no, that's different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's different. Um, but I do I think just, that part of the energies that are coming in is helping people become more conscious of their dreams. I think that's what's going on. Yep. This is just the beginning. It's, be- I think it's beautiful. It's cr- It's, 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 it's it's crazy for people that are not used to it. I grew up with the dream thing. So it's crazy for people that are not used to it. But this is the beginning of our consciousness expanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we've talked about that from going from third to fifth dimension. It's, that's part of it. Yep, that's part of Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. So the, the temporal so cool. line thing, or I, I'm, I hope I say, I'm saying it right in English. In, in Spanish, it's línea atemporal. So I think it's temporal, temporal line. Um, that sounds yeah, that sounds right. They're 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 collapsing, and because the administration is trying to get all the timelines in order to help us with their ascension, it's part of like the cleanup. I guess call it the cleanup crew or the cleanup process. Um, and so the 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 worst off ones are the ones that are collapsing first. So it would make complete sense that that's one that collapsed because that scenario that played out, which seems to have been Earth, if it was a parallel life to this one that it was probably on earth it was just earth that went completely and utterly sour now i Mm -hmm. didn't know what was going on the surface i only knew that the probability of you surviving if you you stayed on the surface was minimal so i knew i had to get myself down and i bumped into these pods that looked like big like big 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 like elevator like pods or whatever like i don't even know how to describe it And when she messaged me today and I had not told her about my dream, she told me I had a dream the other day and the surface was going, there was an atomic, I think it was an atomic bomb or some atomic nuclear war or I don't know what she said. And she had to get to the surface. And so maybe that's the puzzle piece I was missing. Maybe that's what was going on. And just earth had gone into full blown war. And that was like the worst timeline we had. Maybe. Yeah, it could be. So... Thankfully, it's not. Wow. It's not anymore. It seems to be. Well, that was our conclusion with her when we talked about it. Our conclusion was that it it, it was a time. It was probably a timeline that collapsed, and that we're we're healing the that aspect of ourselves via experiencing it because we have to heal it as well. It's it's like you can't just heal out of no, nowhere, nothing. And so you need that that version of yourself that's coming back into this one. Um, it's like reintegrating with itself because we have versions of ourselves in all those parallels, when it reintegrates with itself, you need the most heavy part of that, that, that experience to be healed. And so your consciousness needs to find a way to do it while it's still incarnated here. Yep. So that makes sense to me. This is like very out there for maybe a lot of people that... <laughs> no, it doesn't feel no? out there to me. Like I, it might be for some people listening, but it doesn't feel out there at all. Like... This is all stuff we're going to have to start. We're, I mean, I have resistance sometimes to looking at some of the stuff that you study and that you understand, but I'm like, I know it's coming. 
I know it's something we're all looking at. We all need to understand as we move forward. So I've just, I don't resist it anymore. I just listen. I integrate it. I understand it the same way. At, at some point in my journey, I was like past lives and our soul incarnating. I was like, I started to understand it fully when I went down this path of, of healing myself. There's this right? like sense of, you know what I'm the reason I want to like, I want to teach everyone, every, everybody what I know. And I have a, a lot of reasons. And I guess it would be good to talk about analysis for talking about this. Because this is what I was just talking about. You'd understand it would feel more like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I heard about that. Like if you hear the material that we go through with the, I'm going to cosmic you, right? The course that I'm creating. And so I'm trying to make it in a way where it's like, we're going to start slow. We're going to understand like where little tiny us is inside of this big mega structure. And I'm, it's, t- it's taking me a lot of time and I'm, I'm taking me a lot of effort and a lot of planning, which, you know, I usually leave that to you, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. but I'm literally, t- I think today's day, like five of me spending at least seven hours on one document trying to gather pictures. Cause like I, the thing with my course is she never put up pictures so there was never like putting up pictures and you going, okay, yeah. And I understand that that's her way of doing it. And that's the way that her spiritual team wants it. But I'm like, I want to be able to bring people in that have never heard about this before and have never understood it and have resistance to it and find it hard to accept or understand. And so I'm trying to bring in all these pictures and visionary and understanding so that I can walk people in slowly. I mean, it doesn't mean it's not going to get rough because... I was thinking, what what am I? What's the plan going to look like? Is it going to be one video a month? Is it going to be two videos a month? And I thought, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly introduce this into people's like conscious conscious mind. I was thinking, I'm gonna do one video a month, and it's gonna target a specific amount of stuff, and then I might go deeper into that subject later on. But the idea is like you need the basis of this, right? So I'm like seriously planning out like how I can better focus it for people that are just starting to understand. Like the first class is, which I finished creating today, the first class is all about all the multiverses. Um, and then we get into, inside of that, like what, what's inside the multiverse? What's the name of our multiverses? How, how many are there? Like I even like talk about how many inhabited worlds there are all in all the multiverses, right? All this. And we get into like the structure where it goes in, 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 until we go boom and we hit earth. So we're learning where our little tiny planet is Inside of all this mega structure. And so the idea first is understanding that. So, so you can then understand who's our creator. How does our creator work with us? Why were we even created in the first place? How were we even created in the first place? Like all of this is all part of the course and I'm obsessed with it. Like I could literally yeah. talk about this for five hours nonstop and I would still have some, like, some crazy stuff to say. <laughs> it's your thing. Oh my God, I love it. But you were, you're talking about learning, right? Like you're saying teaching something and learning. Because basically what we want to... Lou, Lou proposed a really good topic today, which I think it'd be a good moment to get into. Speaking of teaching and absorbing information and learning and who we absorb from, right? Yeah. What I, what I think of is um, when I was... There was a, there, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of phases where I get really sick and I was born sick. So it's been kind of th- something I've had since I was a, a little baby. Um, but then I had this like phase, which was around COVID time where it was like, I was just sick, 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 sick all the time. And that's like some of the things that's happening to everybody now from what I hear. But at the time it was like nonstop. And I think I would talk to you and you remember, like I would have two days of not being sick and boom, yeah. again, down again. It was crazy. And I was working out. I was eating healthy. I was doing smoothies. I was like detoxing. And like I was doing as much as I could. And it was just a consistent thing. And I got to a place where my vibration was, oh my God, I have to fix this. Like I have to fix this. And this Desperation. Is some, yeah. And this is, the subject came up because we had talked about it on our dinner um, with the girls on, on Sunday. Um, like, what do you know? Like, how do you know when to sign up for like this course or that course or go to that healing modality or go with that person? Like, how do you know? Cause there's so many options. Like who, how do you know who's right and who's wrong? Right. And 
my con- this is my conclusion because maybe someone else has another response. But my conclusion was my experience from when I was in that place. I remember I I did the healing with Courtney. I well not healing, sorry. I did the hypnosis session with Courtney. I like those. I don't. I can explain to you the amount of healings that I tried, the amount of things yeah, external to that. me that I tried on top of my own things, right? And it was not working. And I got to a place where like I, I'll do anything at this point. And so on top of doing hypnosis with Courtney, I did hypnosis somewhere else as well. And that for me was a massive lesson because when I did that hypnosis session, what I realized was, first of all, I was looking for a way to heal myself, but I was in desperation mode at that point. I was like, it was like nothing was working and I was just desperate. And so my energy was, I heard that this person over here really helps you cure cancer and all this other stuff. I said, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. I went like full blown, thrown myself into it. Right. And that's kind of how I am anyways. My personality where like, I'm like, I want to try something. I'm going to try it. But the thing with that hypnosis session was that that person's vibration, it's not like Courtney where you go to Courtney and Courtney's vibration is like very respectful of your soul and very respectful of like where your soul wants to go. And she doesn't go into it. And and most people like will know her process she won't go into it and say, you have to go here, or this is what's going to happen. Or she is sitting in the chair expecting this to happen to you. She has no expectations for you. And she talks about that a lot. This individual... I mean, the way she teaches is is your soul guides that you guide it. She respects that. You advocate... She always says that. You advocate for yourself in those sessions. Yeah. When something doesn't feel right, she won't push you in that direction. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and that's the really similar to us when we read the country records. Like, I don't want to know your, I don't want to know your story most of the time because I just want it to come in clean. I don't want to like already have prejudices towards a subject or a person in your life. I prefer to go boom. Okay. This is what I'm getting. Okay. Let's talk about it. Do you want to give me details now? Okay. Um, yeah. and so I, that's why I also like the reading because I don't want some, some external opinion to possibly affect what I'm about to get. But in this other hypnosis session, I should have I should have probably not gone. I, there was a whole learning experience behind it that actually was really positive, especially for protecting and connecting and channeling. We added this to our course, like making sure that your channel is like, you know, not being externally intervened with. So there was a lot of really positive things that came into play thanks to that experience I had. But I, I had to think about it for a very, very, very long time, what had happened during that session. And first of all, the person already had a massive prejudice towards this is this never. So the person's perspective is no one that channels on earth, nobody, nobody that channels on earth is ever a clean channel. Everybody is, has a parasite. Everybody's infected. Everybody's receiving negative controlled information, everybody. And like, I've, I even had a discussion with the, with the person after and asked questions and said, well, what about this book? And what about this person? What about like really, really well-known people? No, no. Everything's intervened. Everything's inter- intercepted. Everything's controlled. So that's the- how convenient because that helps him with his work. Yes. Well, of course. Well, yeah, but anyways, yes. And so that person's already going into it and the tone of voice and the way that what they're looking for, they're already pushing for that experience. Yeah. They're, they're, if they're already, that's their goal. That's their aim. But you're under a state where you, you can't control where you're going or how it's going, right? You're in hip, you're in some sort of mm-hmm. hip, hypnosis state, right? But my experience was very strange because I remember being in the middle, because I can't remember most, like all of it, but I remember being in the middle of it. And I remember at one point, the subject of the Akashic Records came up, of course, because that was one of the things that, in his perspective, no one can channel cleanly, right? So he was going for that. When My session wasn't about that. My session was about, I want you to he- help me heal. Because I was actually going in thinking that I was going to cure something from a past life that I'd brought in, that I, didn't, I, I wasn't able to experience with Courtney. But we did go to other places that were great. But I was like, okay, this, this person supposedly is really good at tapping into past like, li- timelines or lifetimes. And cleaning up things or agreements that you made that are like intoxicating this one. That's the reason why I went to that person. Mm -hmm. And so what ended up happening was at one point the Kashuk records and and for him it was all about the Kashuk records. Like where was my, like my health came towards the end, I think. But at one point I remember being in what felt like a massive ass bubble. And, and it was like all these beings were there, all felt really low vibrational. Everything felt negative. Like I looked around me, it was just all, I mean, the word ugly comes up to my mind. Like everything was just grayish, ugly, duh. And then at one point I remember thinking, where are the Akashic records? Cause I think we were talking about that. 
because I don't know what point what I was saying, but I remember my mind, my mind was like there and I was going, where are the Akashic records? This isn't the Akashic, I know the Akashic records. And then I felt this like ting, like this like, like ping or something to like look up and I looked up and they were far away and I could see them and I recognize, like I'm full of goosebumps. I could see them like far away, what looked like in my mind, it was like the heavens, like past the heavens. And I looked up and I could see them looking down at me. And I remember having a subconscious or what's called subconscious conversation with them, which this inter- or, this uh, person that put yeah. me into hypnosis was not, he was not hearing because he was getting mm. me to, to channel through me, the negative entities. He was getting me to speak. Wow. Right. So I couldn't, at no point did he give me the power over and say, what are you experiencing? What are you seeing? It was all about like, yeah. What are you seeing to the right over here? What do you think? So it's very controlled by the individual. And so I remember looking up and having a subconscious conversation. I said, why aren't you guys here with me? Why, why am I here? And they said, you made the free will choice to do the session with this person. And this is who this person connects with. And we can't, we can't intervene in that process. You agreed to connect with him and he's connected to this. And it all made, in two seconds, I understood it. And the other, the, the other really interesting thing is when I was, saying the things that these beings were supposedly communicating while saying it to the, to him, I knew that they were lying half the time. And I would, wow. I, I would, I remember verbalizing things and, and, and I would know that cause they were, I don't know if, I don't know how it works, but it's like they're controlling my brain. I don't know. I don't get it at the time, but I know kind of the, the semi thought process where they know that they're lying and anything that he asked, they would respond what he wanted to hear all the time on a consistent basis. And so then he would ask something. He said, you're lying. And, he, and they would go, yes. And he goes, it's really this. And they would say, yes, actually, yes, it's really that. So anything he wanted what? to hear, they were feeding. Yeah. They were, and they, but they what were lying the most of the time because I knew that they were lying because I could hear, I could hear the, the thought that they were lying. They were making it up at it's the an time. energy, right? Yeah. It's so weird. So anyways, this whole thing I'm telling the story because for me, it was a very vulnerable state. Um, I don't know like another word to put it. It's like. Who you go to connects you to what they're connected to. Like yeah. that was the biggest lesson for me. Like if you go to someone that's connected to this set of masters, like me and you, we have our set of masters. If someone comes to me, even though I'm channeling their Akashic Records, my set of masters are with me. And they're, they're supporting us. Yeah, Exactly. They're supporting us. And that's why we both also verbalize things differently because they respect the way we, our free will is, I'm going to channel for you, but this is how Lucia channels. And my team works with me in that way. That's the best way that Lucia can feed you that information or Lorena. And so this is kind of the same. Courtney comes with her set of masters that are amazing and respectful and, and you have the free will to go down whatever path your soul wants. This individual is going with a, what's it called? Like, um, not a projection. What's the word? Like they're coming in with a, a preconceived, like kind of energy that like a predetermined predetermined yeah it's it's ideas beliefs and this is why that person had a set of belief systems had a set of expectations has a a form of working and that's all they do but this is where i feel like the energy of the akashic records is so different it's, i can only compare it to that at this point right i'm sure other people here listening probably have other comparisons but I even set the intention of not allowing my belief systems, my experiences. I say that before every reading I'm too. thinking. I say that before every yeah, reading. Me too. This is, and I and I try to advocate. Like I tell the person, advocate for yourself. If there's if there's a topic that for whatever reason they go into, and you, you, maybe 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 the Akashic workers knows you need to hear that that day, but you don't feel comfortable. Tell me. We'll go to a new question. We'll we'll go in a different direction. It's never forcing anything on anybody. That's that's disrespecting their free will, the, and, and that's the other, disrespecting and their oh, information. Wait, go, but you have the free will to choose. But this is something really great for you. But you have the free will to choose. But da 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 mm-hmm. da. Right? There was no free will yeah, here. Person, I was stuck in that bubble. No, I was stuck in that bubble, and I could see my team up there, and they were like, "Sorry, Lucia, we can't do anything." Your free will chose to go to this person. This is what this person is connecting with on a consistent basis, no matter who they're with. And I knew that I could do anything. But do you know how long it took me to under... That took me more than a year to understand what had happened. Because it had been so complex what had happened in that session. But the worst part of it all is that... And traumatizing. The, it was so traumatizing, Lorena. And there were so many things that the person would say like, oh, because nobody connects, blah, 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 blah. Like, 
I'm under hypnosis and you're repeating all these things that are your belief. No, because this never happens. Yes. No, because nobody connects because that doesn't exist because mediums don't exist because psychics don't exist because channels don't exist because blah, 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 because control doesn't exist here. There is no real free will. And there's, he, this person's like saying all these things and I'm in hypnosis. I can't even, I can't even talk about my opinion. Nothing, my opinion was never in it. And it was just the beings that he channels that are part of his bubble, his belief system were going, yeah. Yep, that's true. Yeah, no, yeah. Which seem a bit like low vibrational. They don't seem like they're they're there to do good. Yeah, and so when I help. when I came out of it, when I came out of it, I was like so dizzy and so like just. I was like out of it. I was like, what the fuck? Where am yeah. I? It was the energy and the vibration had been so low, so low that I could I couldn't I wasn't used to it. I couldn't handle it. And um, and on top of that. The individual shared my session with thousands of people, thousands of people, even mm-hmm. though I messaged and said, dude, I don't agree with any of the session. I don't agree with what I connected with. I don't agree with any of the You things. didn't even help me. Yeah. You <laughs> didn't even help me because now I'm, t- I'm still freaking, I'm still freaking where I am. And now I'm stressed out and you're, I'm getting even more sick. <laughs> like you're not respecting yeah, my exactly. per- privacy and I'm getting even more sick. And the person who didn't give a shit just blocked me, stopped talking to me. And that was it. Which, you know what, so I've had to bad. go through the process of like pardoning the person, the forgiveness thing. Cause like at some point, like I had to let it go because it's still, you know, it's, it's still disrespectful. It's still there. It's still something that happened. There was never a forgive me. It was never, I was a wrong, but then I was like, that just goes to confirm that bubble is where that person lives and they don't know how to mm-hmm. see, try, treat you in a different way because that's where they live. And that goes to show you, and it was a massive experience for me. And the, what I want to like end this whole thing with is. The part that hurt me the most was not the disrespect for me. It was, this is the information I'm representing. My hypnosis session is, he's sharing it with people. And it's his way of saying, look, I'm right. Nothing in this world is free. You do not have free will ever. You're controlled by everything and everyone. I I went to the session thinking I was just going to go to a past life and clear clear it. I'm like, fuck, man. (laughs) Right? What hurt me the most is that my session became... And I'm all about this podcast and I'm, I'm all about like, you have free will and you're, you, you be your own creator and we're co-creators and we're amazing. And I'm always about self-empowerment. And no one has all the answers. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm all about yeah. self-empowerment all the freaking time and learn about the galactic information so you can free yourself and free your consciousness and we can get to fifth dimension. And then this, this thing is out there and it contradicts what I want to represent and what I want to stand for. And that's what hurt me. It's not that, but it wasn't you. That's the thing, though. I know, and that's so something that I had understand to understand. That I had to I had to sit down with my cash records and ask, and they and they said you tried not to sh- you tried not to put it out there. You don't want to be a part of that. You've and I, I did this whole exercise where I repositioned myself. I said you have to reposition her and say that you choose light every morning, every day, till I kind of pardoned myself because I was feeling bad that I was representing that and I didn't feel good with that. And so I went through this whole forgiveness yeah. ceremony process for myself. This was more than a year ago. And I mean, it's taking me that long to even talk about in the podcast because I had to like understand mm-hmm. the whole scenario. Be like, what the hell? So my conclusion is, and I wish this for everybody because I love everyone so much and I don't want anyone to go through what I went through, like ever, like this whole false guru thing that we were going to get Christos on about, which we still have to, but this whole false guru or people that are just in it for the money, not for really helping you or healing you or, or for fame or, you know, whatever reason could be behind it. Who, who knows? Yeah, it There's could so be many monetary or just validation or power. Some people just want to like, is, yeah. be like, oh, I can heal you and I'm awesome. And maybe it's not even about money. Like who knows? Ego, right? Um, yeah. whatever reason it, it is when you choose you have to be in a place, and that's what I learned with the sickness. You have to be in a place of not, in my case, it was desperation. You have to be in a place of balanced and you have to be like, okay, I'm, I'm right now today. I'm doing really good, but this is a thing I constantly consistently have, but you're choosing it in the moment or in a day where you're not there. You're not vibrating in that like place of desperation or sadness or guilt or whatever low vibration you could feel that we all go through at some point when you choose a healer, when you choose a channel or when you choose a reader, when you choose a whatever, or a teacher, make sure that it's on a day where you're like, oh my God, this really excites me and I feel good and I'm in a good place because you're picking and it from my intuition balance. is leading me and it, that person, that person's energy is calling out to me, right? Yeah. Your intuition, you, you vibrate with that person. And sometimes you confuse intuition with that, in that desperation moment where it like feels like the right thing. That's what I'm saying. Pick it when you're balanced, pick it when you're in a place of centeredness. And I think that will help us all 
choose the healers, the teachers, the readers, the connectors. Because mentors. I think that we can still take care of each other and heal each other. We all need each other. Like, we still need to go outside of ourselves sometimes to get a little bit of assistance. And there's nothing wrong yeah, with that. We've said this before. Not everybody has the best intention. No, and this story, this story is no. an example of that. 100%. I just wanted to stop so, being sick, and it turned into, like, a whole ego trip or something. Not for me, of course. Yeah. No, but this person fed off... And I'm sure this person also somehow took some of your energy too, right? Because when you felt dizzy and you felt like, shh, shh, you know, crap afterwards. I think afterwards, it was the bubble like, I was in. It was like such a, it felt like it's sticky. It, that's the only example I can give you. It felt sticky. Like when you're there, you're stuck and it's so hard to get out. It mm-hmm. felt sticky. And I think, it's, I think it's like the negative low vibrational energy. Um, but also what a world to live in to, to really believe that everything is every single person, every single thing, every minute tiny detail has been corrupted to this individual That's... nothing on earth has any sort of what's the word genuineness uniqueness uniqueness yeah. i don't know and um i don't believe in that at all not at all and also because i i was in the mid i was the one channeling the session or not channeling, hypnosis i don't know what you would call it i was i was the one in the middle of hypnosis session, so i was the one experiencing visualizing and seeing everything and I could see the worlds of what I would connect with on a daily basis, the Kasha up there. And they looked really light and bright. And they looked really happy and aligned and cleared and cleansed. And I was in this sticky, icky place. And I and they were like, sorry. Like, I could feel them sending me love in, in a way and going, we're sorry. Like, we know that this isn't easy for you. We know that this is hurtful for you right now. We can't do anything to get you out of it. Like, I was asking, like, dude, get me the hell out of here. What is this? And they were mm-hmm. like, we can't. You, your free will. Now they're respecting me. You you have to also learn what consequence decisions and consequences have, right? So they were saying your free will 100%. chose this, and now this is the consequence. You have to experience it now, and so they couldn't do anything about it. So that's another lesson. Like, why is this happening to me? Could be something that someone says to themselves when something happens. Maybe because the, it's the consequence of a decision made in a non balanced state, like my scenario, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, never make decisions. It doesn't matter if we're talking about spiritual things or other things. Never make a decision from desperation, from an emotional state that you can't feel like you can, like where you can, you need to be centered, right? And we talk about this even when you open your Akashic Records. Don't open your Akashic Records if you're in a super hyper emotional state, if you're nervous, if you're frustrated, if you're angry, don't do it. Yeah, we say that in our course. Calm all the time. yourself down. Bring yourself down to center. And when you feel ready, then you open your records. First of all, because it'll be hard to connect. But second of all, you're not on the right energy to do it. And I could guarantee you from what I, I have my records open and you're telling the story in more depth than when we originally talked about it because you have more insight I've on it. I had a year now, to think about it. <laughs> yeah, I had forgotten totally. Analyze about this. it. I did not forget um, it. <laughs> he's not in balance. No. He, he's not in balance. So whatever he does, will bring that energy to everybody he works with. Yeah. Another thing I want to say is no one should ever push ideas, beliefs, or anything on you through any type of spiritual tool, spiritual practice. That's not how it works. No one's there to, no one's there to convince you of anything. In any case, to me, most, more than, more often than not, spiritual readings or spiritual healings are a validation of what you're already feeling or whatever you're going through. Yeah, usually a reading is like, oh it yeah, can bring I was insight. Feeling, thinking that, but I just needed someone external to tell me. Like that's, that's a typical It can reading. bring insight and information, but it will never completely contradict and, and tell you that you're wrong and that everything that you believe, like that's, that's like, that's extreme. That is not spirituality. <laughs> um, but the problem with this also, you know, I, I always tell people, advocate for yourself. If you can get yourself out of that, in that case, you were in hypnosis. Hypnosis is, is tricky. Well, that, that, that was that was a, a thing that I was like, maybe I should get Courtney to talk about this a little bit more since she's into hypnosis. But that reminded me a lot of, of, of Courtney and how um, she said once, she told a sto- story once where like, in the be- I think it was in the beginning where she said, when you put someone under um, hypnosis, 
if she said, I didn't read any of the Brian, or was it Brian Weiss books, or was it Michael Newton, one of those books. She's like, I didn't read any of those books because if you already think something and know something, usually we find that it could come into the session of the person. She literally, mm-hmm. I forgot what word she used. I'm probably not saying it as nice as she does because she's more into that subject. Um, and so that's a really good indicator that this person in their mind was like, this is what happens every time you connect with anything, da, 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 like all the belief system of the individual is projected into the session of everybody. And why we as healers, all of us, everybody, you listening out there, anybody that's in this spiritual space or uh, being of service to people, do your healing. You cannot get away from that because you will project your own issues onto the person. This is what this person has done. They've probably had some nasty experience or they just connect with a lower vibrational and they're projecting that onto everybody they work with. It's not how this works. To end it on a happy note, if though, it, I have not yeah. gotten sick. This is the best I've felt in a very long time. Knock on wood. No! <laughs> no, 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 no! Always knock on wood. Oh, you gotta always no, knock on wood. No, but I can't because it has to be wood without legs. And I only have wood with legs Do right the here. leg of the table. There you go. Um, yeah, I agree. I think you've... There's been a lot of shifting in the last year for a lot of us. So that makes sense. But also, like you said, you should never leave... A, you never leave a session feeling more stressed, anxious, or worried. I felt or, dizzy. You know, sometimes dizzy, it can move energy. Dizzy. Oh my god! Certain sessions can move energy, but in general, you should f- feel like a little bit of weights. No, I did not feel better. I felt right? worse than I'd gone into it. I felt way worse. Way worse. I can't even. Yeah, I can't even I think, remember the rest of the day. Like because I was just like, what? Yeah. That was awful. It was just, I came out of it going, that was awful. The whole experience was awful. It was just like, my day went to blur. And it was, it was like, I went to an existential crisis. I remember calling you going, what the hell did I just see? What the hell did I just experience? This is awful. And it was like, mm-hmm. just, and it wasn't like I went anywhere like up there, light and bright. I had gone somewhere that was like low. Like, I don't know if I was under earth, like, in like a sub world or what, but it was like this massive bubble of stickiness and ickiness, and negativity. And it felt like I was stuck even lower than I am now here on earth. Like it felt even lower vibration than earth. Like you and I talking now. Yeah. So yeah, this isn't like everybody's doing what this person's doing, but no, but it's just an example. To your that intuition. We have. No, this is an example of things that can actually happen. And we're not talking just about hypnosis. We've had people about like, I, mean, okay, I can think of it. I went off, off the top of my head. Right. Um, that's typical for like, uh, those really, really like, um, I don't know the word in, um, English, but chanta. Um, yeah, just like a scammer. Okay. So it's chanta scammer. Um, you know, like, let's say, and I've heard this story from more than one person. So I, I'm generalizing because I'm literally telling quite a few people's story here and I can't think of one specific but it's like, you'll be like, oh, I want to cleanse my house. And they'll, they'll come to your house and be like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. If you continue this, your husband's going to die. Your dog is going to get sick or whatever thing they make up on the list. You have to come to me for seven sessions and and it's going to be $5,000. Yep. <laughs> and they, yeah. they just went into fear mode because they just heard that their husband's going to die or their dog's going to get sick. Or their child is going to have an accident or whatever, whatever. Um, or you're going to get cancer and you need to clear this out. And I, you know what? Come with me. I said, it's going to be about $5,000. You can pay it in installments. No problem. Like, right. Like, and they're the only That's ones true. that can he- yeah. do it. Like fix it, clear it. And I've heard more than one of these stories, Lorena, more than one. And then yeah. the person goes into massive debt because it never ends. I've heard one person talk about that. I've heard several people, and I know several people that have been in that, and they've gotten themselves out of it. They realized it in time, but you can sense somebody's intentions, but not if you're in that desperation and fear mode, right? If you're in that, it's going to be so hard to listen to what feels right or where you need to, or what you need to do, or who you need to connect with. So this is just, I guess, advice, really, like not necessarily be careful, but be in the right energy when you do choose to get a healing or work with somebody, you know, you have to fully feel it in your body and not, and and we've talked about this in a past episode. I don't remember what episode it was. I'll see if I can link it if I find it. 
where nobody's there. No, you, you're not going to have a healing with somebody. They're not going to solve all your problems. No, nobody's there to solve everything. The action or has fix to be taken everything. by you, and they can guide you in the right direction. And then your that's up mindset to you might have to change. With your free will, you might have to choose yeah. to change your mindset to take certain actions. Um, yeah, you have to be very. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't realize that not everybody has the right intention or the best intention. And they, the person that might be doing that or giving that service might not even realize they're doing it. They're just in ego mode, like you said. They're in ego mode, and they don't realize that they're yeah. they're just focusing on the business part of it, right? And it's fine to focus on that, but you need to focus more on your gift and what you're helping, how, how you're helping people heal and move forward and find their purpose and find their mission, like... That, that to me is a definition of the person in the right energy. Otherwise, it's just it's like a job that they have. Yeah, I, you know, I just do this. It's money. It's great. It's like, I, mean, I could tell you, no, like you I was for the right reasons. For me, health has been my biggest. I mean, I was born and I almost died. Like that. That's what actually took us to where we are today, right? Thanks to me being born and almost dying. Yeah. We were able to meet our grandma who helped heal me and then continue to have contact with our family. And we, you know, that's, that's, that's what, that's why I think we're here today. Thanks to that experience. And I understand it, it served its purpose, but that's one thing. But then, you know, you know me since I was born and I was sick throughout my entire, my entire life. And at some point when I was a teenager, I thought it'll end. And then I was in my twenties. I thought it will end. And then I was in my thirties and I thought it'll get better. And then now here I am and I'm just seem to just start getting a handle of it. But you get, I, I was in desperation mode with sickness for, for so many years. And I'm a lot of people I'm sure can understand me. For example, people that have chronic pain. It gets to a point mm-hmm. where you just desperate. It's like the chronic pain, stop the pain, man. I'll do anything to stop the pain. You'll go to anybody, anything. And so that's why I'm saying like, They'll try everything. Yeah. Or even like the, like the, that scenario where someone comes to cleanse your house and they're telling you, you get into fear. And you're like, Oh my God, no, I'll do anything. I have to like, wait, um, like take a breath, wait a moment and, and make the decision when you're like more centered and balanced and say, okay, does this, does this healer feel right for me? No. Okay. Then I'm not going, Oh, well, yes. Okay. Oh, then, then it's fine. Or does this teacher feel like the right teacher for me? Or does this course over here? Or does this, even like if you're going to move, does this town over here that I'm thinking about moving to, am I trying to run away from something or is it something that I really need and what? So it's like everything. We have to make sure that we're choosing it and deciding it from a balanced place because if not, it's going to happen like me with Akashic Records. Sorry, Lou. <laughs> this was your free will. Mm-hmm. You chose it. Now you have to live the consequence of it, but we'll see you later when you're ready to come, <laughs> when you're rebalanced mm-hmm. again, right? And heal that heal the trauma you just went through. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> And I'm sure part of it could be that you needed to share this here. Yeah, they um, always choose to make me experience things so that I can share it after. Yeah. Yeah, could, thank you. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Thanks, spiritual team. <laughs> Thanks, man. Taking one for the team. <laughs> but it's important that we do listen to ourselves and no one's there to solve all the problems. I think the moment we can understand that and that we all have the power within ourselves and that the right person will show up and help you in the way that guides you in the right direction, but they're not there to solve everything ever. And they'll, they'll help you understand that too. That's something that I'm understanding more too. It's like, they'll help you understand that the power is within you and that it's up to you to do it, but they can guide you and show you what's going on. They can guide you and show you some tools. They can guide you and show you and they can, they can clear things out for you. But after that, it's, it's your job. My session with Courtney was so much more different. Like, cause I, I went to Courtney before for healing and my court, my session with Courtney, she like, you know, lets your soul take you where you need to and all that stuff. And I loved it because I actually experienced the birth of the baby. That was me. And dude, I was bawling. And my mom says you were born. And all you did was cry. And I remember like, I lived the scenario again and I was crying. And I, I don't know. I don't remember if it was like if it was Courtney that asked me why I was crying, but it came to my mind like why am I so why am I crying? And then I realized I was feeling so upset that I had had to come back to Earth. I was so upset, Lorena. I was I was bawling like Courtney was like <laughs> with, with me in the session. I was just bawling about it that I had to come back to Earth. I was so upset about it. And then that in that session that came out that, that my soul was just like 
oh, I, I know, like, I, I take one for the team kind of thing. And I had to come back and I was just so upset about it. When I finally made it back, I was like upset about it. Like, that's the scenario that supposedly kicked off the sickness, the trauma of having to come back. I mean, I can, I can probably tell you half the world will be like, me too. <laughs> yeah. Not just Lucia, but me yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but course, I was able to yeah. experience like a real scenario that my soul went through. And it was a very different sort of hypnosis. And it was very, you know, Courtney's very respectful with, with, with each individual. So very. especially when it comes to hypnosis, where you're in such a vulnerable place where, I mean, are those videos of like people where like they're on stage and they'll be like, every time I like cough, you're going to quack like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's different, right? I know, but like that's an example it's, of like, yeah, the vulnerability of yeah, it. That the vulnerability, vulnerability yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I hope that my shitty scenario and my story help help people decide better when they're going through one of those complicated moments. It's gonna stop. Be like, wait, let me make sure that I'm choosing the right thing for me when I'm in a balanced place. The first that, and second, anyone who's ever been scammed. Anyone who's ever been mistreated, anyone who's ever been taken for a ride, <laughs> anyone who's ever like yeah. made the wrong Taking decision of- and it made them worse before it made them better because they, and then they had to clean up the mess that was made them worse. The first thing that I understood was you have to release the guilt of it because you feel so guilty that you made yourself go through that or you let yourself go through that or you put yourself in that scenario. So it's like let hard on yourself, release that guilt because that's going to bring an unfolding of, in my case, more sickness or, you know, whatever. Yep. In my case, it was, I felt so guilty. Not that I had chosen the wrong, the wrong, like healer session, hypnotist. My issue was that I was now representing something that I did not want to, I did not want to represent. I wanted to be positivism for the world and I wanted to be empowerment. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I represent this now. Now, now, now that my energy, this part is out there. Like, I can't believe that. And that would, that would make me upset. And it took me a long time to stop feeling guilty about that or feeling bad. In other words, guilty, I don't know, bad. Stop being, I felt bad about that. Yeah. So release, I tell everybody to release it and let it go. It goes against who you are and what you believe and how you live and how you help people. And this person put those words into your mouth, basically. And it's funny it's, because it's like... It's crazy. You can't... You, you can't verbalize what you want. It's you answering, you're answering what's being asked or being talked about. And at no point did, could Lucia, because I was not connecting half the time. I couldn't come in and go, dude, they're all lying. Dude, this is not true. Dude, I, I see know, a cash yeah. records up here. Like I couldn't express what I was seeing. It was being like blocked. It was, it was awful. Anyways. Yeah. Um, this is why I like the Akashic records too, because the person asks the questions. Yeah. Yeah. You don't ask the questions. You're not, you're, they're coming with their issues. They're, they're asking the questions. The information's coming and through. And the tone and of how they ask it and the perspective on how they ask yeah. it and the way they ask it. Right. It changes everything. Their you have body con- language, They have control everything. of the session. Yeah. Well, well, okay. So I wanted to, um, cause I don't know how long we've been talking for a while, actually. Yeah. We've been on here for a while. It's almost an hour. Um, I wanted to talk about, because I had a lot of people connect with me and ask me like when I was going to run again, the angelic healing program. Um, so if, if it's okay with you, Lo, can I talk about it for like a, a minute or two? For sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. Talk about it. Um, okay. So my angelic program ran, it was around Christmas time, you know, uh, and the end of the year and it had been really busy. Like it was really busy and we had a nice amount of individuals come together and it became an amazing program. And I didn't know what it was going to look like because I was literally channeling it every week. It was a new, um, set of rituals and practices. And then you receive a healing that accompanies all that from the angels, archangels. And we had just spoken about empowerment and, and doing things for yourself and healing yourself. Well, this is what this is about. The angelic program is all about the angels and archangels saying, we'll give you an angelic session and we'll send you the healing. But here's the list of homework you got to do before because it's about you and it's about you empowering yourself, about you clearing out your stuff because we're going into fifth dimension. And fifth dimensional energy is taking accountability, taking action, doing things for yourself, being your own co-creator. And so each, it's four sessions 
It's four weeks, so it's a whole month. It runs for a whole month. And literally, you have something to do every week for homework. And sometimes that's three rituals, three... Th- it's a lot of writing. There's a lot of burning and candles. And so there's a lot of ritualistic stuff to it. It's all very empowering. It's I, I'm obsessed with it, to be honest with you. I really loved it. Um, and everyone that did it with with us, the my, did it with me the first time around, really, really enjoyed the ritualistic part of it, and how you know it makes you feel. It makes you feel like you're taking your power back. It's awesome. But then, it, then you have a session where you receive where that they send you what you need to accompany all of that, all those rituals and all that stuff. And to make sure that everyone understands what to do, I send the person the documents that explain step by step everything we're doing on what days you have to do it. And then also I have a video where you watch it where I explain it even further. Um, so you have everything you need and then everyone receives the healing session that signs up on the same day because the angels are omnipresent. They can go to all, all these individual, all the people, right? Um, and so this is my way of being able to get more people at the same time, but also make it way cheaper. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to let people know what days it's running. If they're thinking about it, it's all March. So you'll be receiving the healing session on um, March 5th, 12, 19, and 26. And it will be at 9 p.m. Central Eastern Time. EST? Eastern Central Time. Uh, Eastern no, Central. Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Standard Time. So 9 p.m. Yeah. If you can't lay down and receive a session at that time on that day, then you can still consciously receive it where, wherever you are. So that's fine. But just know that before that session, for a whole week, you're doing homework. <laughs> so there's no slacking, guys. This is for people that really want to take action and re-empower themselves and, and get in, get that work in and get their stuff there and get their ritual in, the alchemy in and all that stuff. Um, so I will yeah. give you um, the link to access the original document that kind of overviews it all. And then from there, you can sign up. And once you're signed up, then you'll get an email from me with the documents and the links for the videos to watch and a reminder of all the dates and all that, all that good stuff. Amazing. Okay. We'll definitely put the link on the show notes. Um, and any other information we talked about, I'll try to link that as well. But if there's anything that's missing, just reach out to us and let us know if, if you need us to send you anything. And obviously all our other information will be in the show notes. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I yeah. don't know if you want to say anything else. Nothing. I'm just, I've been working so hard to relaunch this angelic program. So don't hesitate to contact me. I'm very excited to get as many people on board. And the other thing that they had said to me when I began this program the first time around was that us bringing down this energy helps us rise the vibration here. So that's the idea. Like for a lot of us to do all this kind of ritualistic, alchemistic, receiving energies, connecting with the angels, because it's going to also help obviously yourself firsthand but then it's like a residual domino effect so i love doing this stuff because i like think about that and it makes me feel good no and the angelic healing really resonates with you and the kind of work i don't know i think it's you're really good at it you know i think a lot of people have had such positive feedback even that i think it's great i think it's perfect and we all have to lean into those things that we know are strengths that can help people because it's needed it's all it's all positive energy right it's, it feels weird. Awesome. It's like, um, it feels like a part of who I am. Like I just associate yeah. myself with that energy because I just, it's really weird. And Lorena, it's, uh, you haven't seen my program and you were going to do it. And I think you should do it this time around. I'm going to do it this. Yeah. I'm going to do it. The la- I was way t- I know, it was I was Christmas so time. Busy. Everyone was insane busy. It was- I was just busy with lots of, lots of sessions and I really needed to kind of save my energy for that. And I think the time I don't know if the time didn't work for me or something. Well, this time you should do it. That's like when I was sessions. This time yeah, you should do definitely. it because you're gonna love it. But also at the same time, it's like it's very different from any work that you've seen me channel. Like the practices, the rituals. I even downloaded light code language that they sent me to do. There's like wow. there's logos that we work with that they made me like write and download. So it's like I remember telling the group, the initial group, like guys, like this is. I've never even downloaded, I didn't even know I was had the capability of downloading this kind of stuff. Like I was, they literally like really wanted me to do the program. It's like the program was already reinstalled up there and it just had to bring it down. It was, it's insane. Like I'm obsessed with it. So I'm going to be doing it as well. Like I did it the first time around and I'm going to be trying doing it with everybody again this time around again because it's just, it just feels empowering. It's nice. Yeah. It's good for you too, yeah. right? Yeah, include yourself. Why not? <laughs> 
Awesome. All right, we're going to sign off. Um, all the links, like I said, will be in the show notes. If you guys have any suggestions for episodes or want to talk to us, you can reach out to us via Instagram or through our contact forms. That'll be on the show notes as well. And we will see you guys next week with a new episode of the Soul Tribe Podcast. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.